Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to read you the instructions of law uh, that will govern your deliberations in this case. You're certainly welcome to take notes, but these are in writing, and you'll be allowed to take them with you back to the jury room. So uh, that might eliminate you having to take notes on what I'm fixing to read to you. Members of the jury, you've heard all the testimony and received the evidence introduced in this trial. The court will instruct you as to the rules of law which you will use and apply to the evidence in reaching your verdict. When you took your places in the jury box, you took an oath that you would follow and apply these rules of law to the evidence in reaching your verdict in the case. It is your duty as jurors to follow the law which I shall state to you. On the other hand, it is your exclusive domain to determine the facts in this case and to consider and weigh the evidence for that purpose. The authority thus vested in you is not an arbitrary power. It must be exercised with sincere judgment, sound discretion, and in accordance with the rules of law stated to you by the court. The state of Mississippi and the defendant have a right to expect that you will conscientiously consider and weigh the evidence and apply the law of the case and that you will reach a just verdict regardless of the consequences of your verdict. It is your duty to determine the facts and to determine them from the evidence produced in open court. You are to apply the law to the facts and in this way decide the case. You should not be influenced by bias, sympathy, or prejudice. Your verdict should be based on the evidence and not upon speculation or guesswork. You are the sole judges of the facts. Your exclusive domain is to determine what weight and what credibility will be assigned to the testimony and supporting evidence of each witness in this case. You are required and expected to use your good common sense and sound honest judgment in considering and weighing the testimony of each witness who has testified before you. <clears throat> Although you as jurors are the sole judges of the facts, you are duty bound to apply the law as stated in these instructions to the facts as you find them from the evidence before uh, you are, before you, I'm sorry. You are not to single out one instruction alone as stating the law you must consider these instructions as a whole. You should not be concerned with the wisdom of any rule of law. <clears throat> it would be a violation of your sworn duty to base your verdict upon any other view of the law than that given in these instructions by the court. Arguments, statements of counsel, and remarks are intended to help you understand the evidence and apply the law, but they are not evidence. Any argument, statement, or remark having no basis in the evidence should be disregarded by you. However, if the statement of counsel is made as an admission or stipulation of fact, then in that event his or her client is bound thereby. If the attorneys on both sides agree as to the existence of certain facts, the jury may accept such stipulations as evidence. The evidence which you are to consider consists of the testimony of the witnesses and the exhibits offered and received into evidence. Production of this evidence in court is governed by rules of law. From time to time during the trial, it has been my duty as trial judge to rule on the admissibility of evidence. You must not concern yourself with the reasons for the court's ruling since they are governed by the rules of law. You should not ask, I mean, I'm sorry, you should not infer from any rulings by the court on motions or objections to the evidence or rules of law that the court has an opinion on the merits of this case favoring one side or the other. You should not speculate as to possible answers to questions the court did not require to be answered. Further, you should not draw any inference from the content of those questions. You are to disregard all evidence that was excluded by the court from consideration during the course of the trial. <clears throat> the court instructs the jury that it is just as much your duty under the law and upon your oaths as jurors to turn an innocent person loose by your verdict of not guilty as it is for you to convict a guilty person. 
The court instructs the jury that it is the duty of each and every member of the jury in this case to decide the issues presented for himself or herself. And if after careful consideration of all the evidence and the instructions of law given by the court and free consultation with each other, there is a juror who has a reasonable doubt of the defendant's guilt. It is that juror's duty under oath to stand by your conviction and favorable to a finding of not guilty. You should never yield your conviction simply because other members of the jury may disagree with you. The court instructs the jury that the defendant at the outset of the trial is presumed to be innocent. The defendant is not required to prove his innocence or to put in any evidence at all upon the subject. In considering the testimony in the case, you must look at the testimony and view it in the light of that presumption which the law closed the defendant with, that he is innocent and it is a presumption that abides with him throughout the trial of the case until the evidence convinces each and every one of you to the contrary beyond a reasonable doubt of guilt. <clears throat> The court instructs the jury that the indictment in this case is not evidence or proof of guilt, and you are not to presume anything from the indictment. But you are to presume the defendant is not guilty unless and until the defendant is proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The court instructs the jury that all of the law which you are allowed to consider or apply in this case is in the written instructions given by the court and you are duty-bound to follow these instructions as the law in this case. Members of the jury, shortly after you were selected, I informed you that you could take notes, and I instructed you on the appropriate use of any notes that you might take. Most importantly, an individual's juror's notes may be used by that juror only and may not be shown or shared with other jurors. Notes are only a memory aid, and a juror's notes may be used only as an aid to refresh that particular juror's memory and assist that juror in recalling the actual testimony. Each of you must rely on your independent recollection of the proceedings. Whether you took notes or not, each of you must form and express your own opinion as to the facts of this case. Be aware that during the course of your deliberations, there might be the temptation to allow notes to cause certain portions of the evidence to receive undue emphasis and receive attention out of proportion to the entire evidence. But a juror's memory or impression is entitled to no greater weight just because he or she took notes, and you should not be influenced by the notes of other jurors. Thus, during your deliberations, do not assume simply because something appears in your notes that it took place in court. The court instructs the jury that if there is a fact or circumstance in this case susceptible of two interpretations, one favorable and the other unfavorable to the defendant, Quentin Tellis, and when the jury has considered said facts or circumstances with all other evidence, and there is a reasonable doubt as to the correct interpretation, then you, the jury, must resolve such doubt in favor of the defendant, Quentin Tellis, and place upon such facts or circumstances the interpretation most favorable to the defendant, Quentin Tellis. The court instructs the jury that if you can reconcile the evidence upon any reasonable hypothesis consistent with defendant Quentin Tellis's innocence, then you should do so and find him not guilty. The defendant, Quentin Verdell Tellis, has been charged with the crime of capital murder. If you find from the evidence in this case beyond a reasonable doubt and to the exclusion of every reasonable hypothesis consistent with innocence, that on or about December the 6th, 2014, in the Second Judicial District of Panola County, Quentin Verdell Tellis did willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously kill Jessica Lane Chambers, a human being, without authority of law, and with or without any deliberate design to effect the death of Jessica Lane Chambers, while he was engaged in the commission of the crime of third-degree arson 
then you shall find the defendant, Quentin Verdell Tellis, guilty of capital murder. If the state has failed to prove any one or more of these elements beyond a reasonable doubt and to the exclusion of every reasonable hypothesis consistent with innocence, then you must find the defendant not guilty. In order to find the defendant, Quentin Verdell Tellis, guilty of capital murder, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt and to the exclusion of every reasonable hypothesis consistent with innocence that the killing of Jessica Lane Chambers was done by the defendant during the commission of the crime of third-degree arson. Third-degree arson is defined as follows. If you find from the evidence in this case beyond a reasonable doubt to the exclusion of every reasonable hypothesis consistent with innocence, that one, a 2004 Kia Rio automobile was the personal property of Jessica Lane Chambers, and two, the 2004 Kia Rio automobile had a value in excess of $25, and three, on or about December 6, 2014, the defendant willfully and maliciously set fire to the 2004 Kia Rio, then you shall find the defendant guilty as charged. If the state failed to prove any one or more of these elements beyond a reasonable doubt and to the exclusion of every reasonable hypothesis consistent with innocence, then you shall find the defendant not guilty of capital murder. The court instructs the jury that the indictment in this case of itself is nothing more than more or less a formal accusation or charge against the defendant. It is not of itself any evidence whatsoever of guilt, and the defendant and each juror should not permit, no, I'm sorry. These, these commas get by me sometimes. The court instructs the jury that the indictment in this case is of itself nothing more or less than a formal accusation or charge against the defendant. And it is not of itself any evidence whatsoever of guilt of the defendant. And each juror should not permit himself or herself to be to any extent influenced against the defendant because of or on account of the indictment in this case. But the defendant's innocence is presumed, and this presumption continues with the defendant throughout the trial until removed by the evidence which convinces your minds of the guilt of the defendant beyond a reasonable doubt. The court instructs the jury that you may not draw any unfavorable inference against the defendant because he did not testify in this case. You have heard evidence that the defendant, Quentin Tellis, was incarcerated or in prison during his third interview with law enforcement officials. You are not to consider his incarceration or his serving a prison term as evidence that he committed the crime for which he is now charged. You may consider it for the limiting pur limited purpose of establishing motive, opportunity, identity, intent, plan, preparation, knowledge, absence of mistake or accident. The court instructs the jury that all 12 jurors must agree on the verdict in order to find the defendant guilty as charged. The court instructs the jury from all of the evidence in this case or lack of evidence has a reasonable doubt in their minds as to the guilt of the defendant, then it is your sworn duty to find the defendant not guilty as charged. Instruction S3, S3 is down right there at the bottom. When you reach a verdict in this case, you should be governed by this instruction in how to properly record that, in, that verdict. Uh, you will write your verdict on a separate sheet of paper uh, in one of two forms. We, the jury, find the, def quote, we, the jury, find the defendant, Quentin Burdell, Ed Tellis, guilty of capital murder, close quote. That's one verdict. Two, we, the jury, find the defendant, Quentin Burdell, Tellis, not guilty of capital murder. 
Those are written on a, either one of those will be written on a separate sheet of paper. All right? And that's S3. That's the form of your verdict, okay? All right.